Unafraid here today is Monday. I uh, appreciate you guys joining us. Please like the feed, share the feed. I'm George Reister. This is uh, Joey Heim. Uh, he clearly likes his muscles. Uh, couple That's things, all I got going, baby. A <laughs> couple things we got going for you guys today. Um, Colin Kaepernick, he filed a grievance against the other NFL owners for collusion against him. And some people are not so happy about it and how this may affect a work stoppage in the NFL. There may be a work stoppage because of Colin Kaepernick not being signed. Uh, the uh, Dodgers in baseball action, they hit a walk-off home run. Walk-off home run by Justin Turner in the bottom of the ninth. Big win there on a the fast balls, track. Balls. Oh, get out of but here, But the pitching dude. has been great. Um, the rules of being a fan, He's got a, he's got a question, won't tell me what it is. And um, – I posted a video on my Facebook Crazy um, video. of a like a three, four year old kid. Their parents have a um, an 80 kilogram, which is about 170 pound python as a pet. And the kids like riding on top. And I can't understand why on earth people keep these damn exotic animals as pets. But is for, that exotic? Exotic's like sexy, like that. That's stupid. No, whether you whether you keep listen, some some people out like here in the valley just got caught with like crocodiles. They got caught with uh, poisonous snakes. They got caught. Somebody out here was walking a lion. Get the? Are you serious? Yes, bro, a lion. We got crazy people among us. So Colin, Colin Kaepernick, he filed a grievance against the NFL owners for collusion against him in terms of him, his gainful employment as an NFL player. And it makes no – I mean, it, I think it's clear to everybody, regardless of whether you want Colin Kaepernick in the league or you don't want Colin Kaepernick in the league, that he's being colluded against, so right? You, so you say for sure he deserves a spot somewhere. Absolutely. I mean, when, when you look at the names that have been signed in front of him, right, and what he's done, he's 29 years old. He's 11th among active quarterbacks. He's 11th in the NFL in career quarterback rating. And he's ahead of Carson Palmer, Derek Carr, Joe Flacco, Andrew Luck, so Eli guy. Manning, no, Matthew Stafford, Cam. Would you rather have him or, or Carson or Palmer or Andrew Luck? I, I, and, you know, I told you I like Colin Kaepernick, but I don't think – I just don't think – you know, and once again, the owners have every right not to employ Oh, hold on. But do the stats the, – the, um, the point is, is that the stats support him being in the NFL – in, in no time in the NFL history has a player who's had the stats that he's had at the age that he's had not been employed, not even in a backup role. I mean, you look at the guys. I mean, so I've already told you the uh, starters, right? And then there's the element of where they put these stats up, where, where they're like, oh, his two-year stats. Yeah, that's, that's like propaganda stats because last year, 16 touchdowns, Four interceptions in 11 games on an awful team. So we agree. If it wasn't for the kneeling thing, he would definitely be on an NFL roster. Now. 100%. But, I always say the but, and I give him, and I, like I've always told you, I have no problem with what Colin Kaepernick did. I, he's courageous. He's a, I mean, he started the whole kneeling movement. So I'm okay with that. But owners, they can, they, they, if they don't want that headache on their team, they have no, no, every no. right. They, they, they have the right to do it. They want to win. Everyone no, 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 they don't I, I want to win because all, above all. no, because if you really Look at Ellis, no, what, what I'm saying is if you really wanted to win, right, if you were the Tennessee Titans and Marcus Mariota gets gets hurt. Is he out tonight? Huh? Don't know yet. OK, um, so and he gets hurt tonight. I'm sorry. He got he got hurt a couple, couple weeks, weeks ago, ago. Yeah. against Houston and Kaepernick reaches out to you. And says, you know, you know, I'd like to come work out. Like, just that, don't don't sign me. Just let me come okay. work out. So let me ask you a question. What if they say, all right, you know what? We're interested in signing you. But what if I got to ask you a question? Are you going to kneel during the national anthem? And he says, yes, I'm going to still kneel. They have every right. No, no, hold up. But but they haven't even gotten to that point yet, which is which is a problem because if winning is supposed to be above all else, right? Uh, and well, no, there is one thing above all else: making money. Yeah. So that, but dude, dude, they they might lose. Guess who? Holes. No, no. Guess who makes money? Winning teams make money, just like the Los Angeles Rams. Nobody was showing up to the Rams games, right? And now the Rams are four and two. 
Guess what's going to happen next Rams home game? Oh, of course. That, we live in L.A. How the fuck runners live over no, there? No, no, every, no. That's every single team. If you win, people show up. But the teams that – first of all, there's so much parity in the league right now. I mean, I just – you cannot – if you bet on the NFL, you're re- re- ridiculously retarded because – Every team is going to – almost 500, even the Chiefs. So there's no more undefeated teams in the NFL. But I don't know if there's a team that's close enough to winning. You know, he's not going to replace Tom Brady. Um, is he – the kid, the kid on the Jets is playing good, McCown, McNown, yeah. whatever. What, so what team is – the Cleveland Browns are not going to – Hold on, hold on. So, so you don't think that – so you wouldn't – well, if I'm in the interest of winning, right – I am signing Colin Kaepernick as a backup quarterback for sure. But, but, then, but then they say crazy stuff like, oh, well, we're, we would have to change our whole entire offense for him. That's not true. Yeah, because they, they said that? Something yeah, like that, that. that's what pe- people have said. Well, you just you, you don't change it. You, you just I, I guess you change it, but he's a running quarterback. So you let's cha- say Joe Flacco went out. No, you, just, you change your – yeah, you, yeah, you're right. Every quarterback, right, like Green Bay now. Exactly. Green Bay is going to have to change what they do right. with Brett Hundley than they will with Aaron Rodgers because Brett Hundley's not Aaron Rodgers. So if you are the – with the way that Brett Hundley played last um, – in the end of the game. How right? did you do I didn't see? He threw three interceptions. Oh, boy. Came in and threw three interceptions. Fight Would on. you call Colin Kaepernick? Yeah, I, but see, this is a whole different thing. No, no, thing. I'm asking if you're the talent green... wise. Talent wise, I told you I like Colin Kaepernick. I, I I fell in love with him at Reno. I loved the guy, but my cousin went to uh, college with him. But but but, it's the kneeling thing. No, I'm asking. They're blaming him. I, I mean, I, I, he is to blame, but I still don't have a problem with what he did. They don't want that. They just like Jerry Jones. Can you imagine if Jerry Jones signs him and he kneels? Like, oh my God, I, that's it's like. So the, do you? No, no. I, we're, we're we're talking about a football. No, no, a football. I agree with you. This, if you are the Green Bay Packers yes, and you have yes. a potential Super Bowl team yes. on your hands, right? Yes. Do you call Colin Kaepernick uh, yeah. with the, with Brett Hundley throwing three interceptions? Yes, but but I have to give the caveat. The but they know the headache that he might bring along. So and especially Green Bay, like I. You know, Green Bay, the, the fans on the team, it's owned not by one owner, it's owned by the city and shareholders. So they might not want him. And and, and then, so there, there's the quote-unquote adjusting to his quarterback style, nah, right? That's, there, that's, that's garbage that's because, garbage. because yeah. you have to adjust to whoever your quarterback is. You don't call the same plays that you do for, for even uh, uh, Tannehill. Can we get your beautiful wife on camera? <laughs> for... <laughs> For, for like you, you don't call the same plays for Tannehill that you do for um, uh, their new quarterback from uh, uh, Jay Cutler. Yeah, for for Jay okay, Cutler. Diana Spellman, she's a huge fan. She says Packers need him, but the kneeling will be an issue. That is the. Problem. It's not That's that. All- it's not the fact that the kneeling will be an issue, but guess what. Guess what matters above all else? I guarantee you Packers fans will shut up and be like, uh, well. I disagree with you. Oh, oh God. I disagree with you, you are crazy. Listen, it, it is all about winning, and that's why I love George Steinbrenner so much. That's why I had so much respect for Red Arbach and Jerry West. Uh, uh, well, Jerry West, too. Uh, Jerry Buss of the Lakers. It's about winning, but you can't piss your fan base off. You just can't do listen, it. Fan bases care, Vick, listen, fan bases care about winning. Just like just, – just like remember when Michael Vick got out of jail, and then the Pittsburgh Steelers signed him first, and then they did, yeah. And oh no 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 no, I'm sorry, Eagles. Yeah, Eagles. Eagles. And remember, Eagles Eagles fans, they were in a rage, they were all upset. And then Michael Vick came in, won some games, took him took him to the playoffs. Oh man, we love Michael Vick again. That's Michael the Vick way was, it works. Well, Michael Vick wasn't gonna kill dogs again. By the way, I still don't blame Michael Vick for that. Believe it or not, I know a lot of people are going to get mad at me. What do you think about the whole? I know it's old, but do you blame Michael Vick for the killing the dogs? Yes, I blame him for it. No, but, he but, grew but up I that also, way. Like, no, no, no. I also, I he also, thought everybody does it. No, no, I, I know because I grew up watching dog fighting when I was okay, young. Okay, so you understand. So I understand why he thought it was okay and all that That's stuff. However, mean. it's still wrong. Of course it's so wrong. You, so but you he have, didn't know it. Like, he thought it was like, you know. When you're out in the clubs doing ecstasy, you think, oh, my God, everybody in the world is doing it. But you're just in that scene. That's what Michael Vick was. I 100% agree with you there. Okay, so Uh people don't realize, though, how this may impact the NFL CBA and a work stoppage. Because there is a provision inside of the collective bargaining agreement for the NFL that says if owners collude against players – then uh, there's an opportunity 
for um, for the players association to void the entire collective bargaining agreement. How crazy would that be if Colin Kaepernick is found to be colluded against, which I do think is going to be a tough case. I mean, mind you, because there's a difference between knowing you are colluded against and being able to prove you are colluded against. We, we yeah, can agree with that, right? Happen. Yes. Yeah. The whole strike players, remember? Like there was a collusion with the strike players that they were the NFL owners were colluding. They'll never yeah. prove it. Yeah, so proving it and actually it being, being it are two different things. Right. And if, the, if he is proven, right? So I will read what I found out today. There is a section of the collective bargaining agreement that speaks to how it could or would be terminated. However, the NFL Players Association has sole responsibility to bring forth such an argument that meets the circumstances described in the CBA. Essentially, he would have had to let the Players Association know that he was going to do this, right? Because it has to be at least, it has to be more than one player who was colluded against. And now with him bringing forth the grievance against the NFL owners, which is essentially a lawsuit. But, and by the way, this is going to get him signed? Oh my God. No, no, no. It doesn't. He's not going to get signed at this career, point in time. Yeah, it, it, it was already done. Mm. No, no, it was already done. But if I were an owner now, right? And I know that this collusion lawsuit is coming, and I know that this may mess up the collective bargaining agreement. If I'm the Green Bay Packers, if I am Jerry Jones, if I'm whoever, I'm calling Green Bay and I'm saying, look, man, listen, man, you're going to have to bite this bullet for us because we can't take this collusion thing because because you already got to remember, right? President Trump is already attacking the NFL, right? Because he's got a bone to pick with them because he didn't get led in the good old boys club, right? Uh, yeah. So now imagine, because President Trump is not above jumping on Kaepernick's side against the NFL right now. Oh, that's going to happen for yeah. sure. Absolutely. So, so he's not above jumping on Ka- on Kaepernick's side to go against the NFL. So in an NFL owners, they, they have to have all this in the back of their mind. Oh, wait, hold up. President Trump already came at us on Twitter about our nonprofit status. Now this collusion, this could be the like like Colin Kaepernick could be the person who ends up like destroying the NFL. Well, uh, but uh, he's just jumping on the bandwagon because you got what Trump said. You got all the kneeling. I mean, the, the, everything is it's all hitting all hitting them at once. Don't forget about the CTE. The uh, kids signing up for, to play football is down. So they can fade the CTE because because the game is changing. They can sell you on that. They can they can sell you on that. But I still saw some dude yesterday got hit so hard and uh, it's just it's, I don't know. I told you for me it's a brutal sport. I would never let my kid play. But they're they're at a crossroads right now. They're gonna have to decide if they were smart. They would absolutely somebody's gonna bite the bullet. Might as well be Green Bay. But Colin Kaepernick loves this. He's he's become a martyr. He's uh, this is exactly what he wanted, and he should never. No, come back to you NFL. don't. You no, man. Yeah. See, see. Here's the. He, he I, loves I, the attention. I, he loves. It. I mean, now he's like he's a superhero. I you to- have the shirt with the fur on the top, with dude. The, I totally. I could not disagree with you more. I he did it to- for a good reason to begin with. I I do agree with that. But now he's like he's like a folk hero. Yeah, but but I guarantee you, I'm telling you that Colin Kaepernick wants to be playing football. Oh, of course he does. Like so, so he doesn't want to go down as a as a folk hero. But I don't think even like I said, we just talked about it. And as Phil over here says, don't the owners have the right to sign whoever they want? That's the problem. They do. They can sign. They can sign a, uh, a Justin Bieber if, if, if they think he's going to bring put asses in the seats. That's just how it is. They're not. They don't want that headache of of Colin Kaepernick. They don't want. Okay, it's so not take Jerry a, it's Jones. A, see, see, see. But here's the thing: is it, is it's a we are assigning a headache to somebody that doesn't even that that's not real. Because remember, last year he played in San Francisco. All of his teammates, his coach, everybody said he was a model teammate. He doesn't. He's it, a good teammate. Yeah, yeah and, and he's a good player. He's a good teammate. All these things. So the idea of a, of a headache, right? But nobody has seen him kneel this season. That might just bring a whole flurry. Of, like, we're okay with it, but there's people that cannot stand the guy that want him dead. I swear to God, I hear it all the time. 
No, no, I, I, I do. It, yeah, go ahead. I know I do agree that, that people are very passionate and adamant about this topic, but but let's just look at it from the angle of the entire NFL, the health of the league, and all that, and where this collusion lawsuit could actually affect the the collective bargaining agreement. And the owners have to be aware of that. So, do you think that there's any way that, like that, that the way that the collusion happened was it wasn't like they all got on a conference call and was like, "Hey, yo, yeah, you don't, yeah, you, yeah, you don't yeah. sign him, you don't spoken. sign him." Okay, yeah. so let's say he signs with the Green Bay Packers tomorrow. Is this lawsuit over? It's all done. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It somebody goes away. Should, yeah. Somebody should bite the bullet. Somebody yeah. Should. Somebody. I mean, it's it's. Just like the the hard knocks thing, right? No team really wants to be on hard knocks every year because their team always ends up failing. Yeah. But guess what? If you are on hard knocks, the the elite throws you a bone. They throw you a caveat. They give you a Super Bowl in a couple of years or something. Oh really? Yeah, dude. Like if you go the play Chiefs games in one? London and well, the Chiefs just can't get a Super Bowl because why not? It's sell out a hundred thousand people. It's it's in Kansas yeah. City in January. I'm sorry, in February. Oh, that's right. That's for the New York debacle a few years back. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not happening under any circumstances. Um. So so Colin so Colin Kaepernick may be the man who like blows up the NFL on some level. I mean, I, I mean, it, it, it's just it's just ridiculous. Okay, but, that's a, before we change subject, you've been watching the NFL, right? Yeah. What, what's going on this year? What do you mean? It's so much parody. It's like, do you like the parody? Yes, dude. It, it, but but the, here's the thing that you're missing is that the parody exists every Giants, single year. 14-point underdogs go to Denver with no wide receivers. And it, happen, it happens, dude. It, that's the beauty of pro football is that, is that you get the Giants who are 0-5, and, and they go play the uh, Denver Broncos. And it's not like the Denver Broncos have Tom Brady at quarterback. They have Trevor Simeon. Yep, and He's not that good. But they have that defense, and they have, I mean, first of all, the Giants defense doesn't the score points. The Giants, the Giants defense did last night. Well, because because they're, because they're playing against night. Trevor Simeon. Well, that same Trevor Simeon killed the Cowboys. I mean, and and uh, who's well, the Redskins? That's football for you, bro. Is that you're going to have quarterbacks who are poor? You're going to have them, and they play like poor quarterbacks. Sometimes they play good. Sometimes they play bad. This is what it is. So now, do you think my Cowboys have a chance to make it out of the NFC with? Uh, uh, Brett Favre out. Uh, Brett Favre. Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. With uh, Aaron Rodgers out. Aaron Rodgers has nothing to do with the Cowboys at this point in time because the Cowboys have to worry about winning their division. Well, we are two and, and get, three. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, no. No, they're two well, and four right now, aren't they? No, we had a bias. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the Eagles are the best team in the division. You got yeah. Eagles. You got Carolina. Atlanta lost again at home to the Dolphins. See, the Dolphins were were 16, 15 point underdogs. I mean, that's crazy. Here is the thing I tell you, Jay bro. Cutler was so bad in London. Did you watch that game against the Saints? Everybody plays bad in London. I mean, you it, there there is so much. No, everybody except Jacksonville. They're uh, amazing in, in because they've gone like two three years in a row. That, that's yeah. that, that's like their second home. Yeah. I, I I will tell you there is more par- there I'm is the Rams by the way there's parity in in the league right but a lot of it comes from quarterback play when you don't have elite quarterbacks it's hard to win I mean that that's why the Rams are playing so well how many elite quarterbacks are there though elite right okay elite Four? quarterbacks For, I I I consider elite like top top six like the top Brady. six yep. Uh, Roethlisberger? No, he's no, there. yeah, yeah. Ro- Roethlisberger. Used Russell to- Wilson? Yep, I got, I got Ro- Russell Wilson in in my top six. You know who's so underrated is Kirk Cousins. I love him. I always like Kirk Cousins. I, I liked him in college. Uh, Come on, man. Yeah, I like I, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback, but and like, that, and that, what's that thing he always does every year? What's it called? The uh, player exempt? What, what's that uh, franchise tag? Yeah, he's making like twenty five million every year. Just one hey, year I'm contract. not mad at him. Yeah. Um, next thing up, though, the the Dodgers. The uh, Dodgers hit a walk off home run last night. You guys are watching Unafraid. Uh, George Reister, Joey Heim. Please make sure you like the feed, swipe over, share the feed, um, make 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 the conversation great again. Can we, uh-huh. can we talk about Jeff Turner real quick? Jeff Turner. Who uh, 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 Justin, Justin Turner. Justin Turner. Sorry, Justin Turner. When the Yankees had a chance to get him. And they were gonna have to throw a whole lot of money his way, and I, he's just a gamer. He's just—I he, love that guy. He's thirty. He's the American dream. He, he could have given up in the minor leagues years ago. Yeah. And uh, I mean, just—he's—he's he's, even with his glove, the plays he's making at third at third base, 
But why is it scoring so? I, I'm telling you, I think they're using different balls in. in oh, the stop it, dude! Are. See, see, here's the here's no my, more foul balls. Like I said, all the foul balls. There's not as many foul balls, and where's all the home runs now? They're, the, they're using regular balls again. I want to no, I want to get my hand on one of them. What are you talking about? The Kershaw, seams. Kershaw gave up four home runs in a game, dude. No, no, I'm saying this round. They're back to using all the games are two one one zero two one. Ooh, it's not the balls, man. It is the pitching. It no. is the pitching. And and here's the thing about the Dodgers, though, right? Because they just had the walk off home run. Um, Justin Turner hit it bottom of the ninth. And when you look at this Dodgers roster, right? The Dodgers roster, the one that they pulled up in the postseason with, and what they played with yesterday was like pretty amazing. So, they have Taylor, who you did not necessarily expect to be. Well, because uh, what's his name's hurt. Yeah, uh, Corey Seager, who's a stud. Yeah, Corey Corey Seager's not in the lineup. Kluber Kluber's is starting at shortstop. Like this foresight that second. I mean, like this is not exactly the the lineup that you thought was going to go two and zero in the in LCS. Well, I'll tell you what I'm really shocked about, and I have a lot of love for uh, Coach Madden. But what is with all this respect to Yasiel Puig? Are you kidding me? Like Do all you, these. Yeah, y- Yasiel Puig is tearing a cover off the baseball no, no, right he'll, now. He'll start. He'll keep chasing bad pitches. Like, dude, that's no, he doesn't. First of all. Every time you walk somebody in the bottom of the ninth, same with the uh, the Yankees the other day, it, the game is over. Like I, it's in a tie game, it's oh I that's the you can't walk anybody unless you have two outs. Oh like that's God. the only way you can put when the, the game was over, already over there. And John Lackey, has there ever been a bigger blowhard in sports? That mouth, he like always. I, I, I don't like John Lackey. I'm not a John. But why did they why did they put in Wade Davis? Like I don't understand. I, I don't know what John uh, what Madden's doing. Listen, Coach man, Madden. they they. Uh, the baseball coaches, they have advanced analytics and they have all these smart guy stats. But sometimes at the end of the day, you have to rely on what your gut says and what you know. You know what I mean? Like, like there, like there's like, listen, I know that the stats say I need to leave a right hander in right now. I need to bring in the uh, lefty. I need to have him face one batter. But sometimes as a manager, like you have to just sit there and be like, look, I know the stats say say this, but I, I'm looking in this guy's eyes right now, and I know he's not ready, and I know that this guy is ready. Well, I'll tell you, today I think is the 13-year anniversary of when Aaron Effing Boone hit that home run against the Red Sox. To, to... Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. I was so happy when he hit that home run. We t- we knocked out Boston. We're going to the World Series. I knew we. You're had- talking about the Yankees when 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 Aaron Boone was playing for the 2003. New York yeah. I think it was 2004. So he had a home run. It was uh, uh, the Yankees advanced. They knocked Boston out. They went to the World Series. And I knew we were. I said my prediction was we would get swept, and we won in five. We played the Marlins. But Josh Beckett, uh, Johnson, the pitcher, uh, what's his name from the Tigers now, uh, Ordonez. They were too good. They were too good. That's so, what it's going to be like this year. Dodger fans, enjoy this because the Houston Astros. I told you we don't have any chance against dude, the Astros. Dude, you are hating so bad on what? the Dodgers what? because. Dude, the Astros, the, here's the difference. Astros don't, the Cubs, Rizzo, all these guys strike out all the time. The, the, the Yankees, they strike. It's so embarrassing how many times they strike out. You will not strike out the Astros. It ain't going to happen. They're going to put the ball in play. What did I tell you about Correa? He's my, my favorite yeah, player. Yeah, but they got two wins already with uh, Kershaw on the mound. So you don't have to worry about what that. What are talking about? If the Dodgers meet the Astros. Kershaw got, he didn't pitch good either game. Listen, bro. He is going to. He's not that. He's Peyton Manning to me. He's not the same guy in the regular. He's, he's different when the playoffs start. Oh, yeah. Somebody just said the Green, Green Bay is going to sign Mike Glennon. Yeah, he, oh, Mike he, Lennon. I don't he's, think he's going to kneel anytime soon. Dude, he's still playing on the Bears. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Um, so, um, next thing up, Joey had a question for me, though. Being a fan, okay. what is All what right, is so you, maybe you guys can help me. I'm a diehard. Everybody knows my teams. Let's see, George, who's my basketball team? Uh, I, I don't, I mean, it's, you could say the it's, it's some team that should, should get relegated from the NBA. The 76ers, the Yankees, the Cowboys, everybody knows my favorite teams. Now, there's athletes that I like. So there's a guy on Facebook. He's a nice guy. We get along. His name is Jeff Angelo. Good-hearted guy. He loves the New England Patriots. He loves the Boston Red Sox. He said he kind of likes the Dodgers, I guess, a little bit because he lives in L.A. So he talks so much crap about the Red Sox and Yankees. And I'm okay with that. I understand. But the Red Sox get knocked out. Now it's Dodgers, Dodgers. Like, oh, look at your Yankees, Dodgers. Is that a fan? Can you like 
two teams in like I'm a Cowboy fan. I don't like the Cowboys and the Packers. I, you know, I don't like the Yankees and the Dodgers. You can only like one team. That's what being a fan is. You get to talk shit whether your team wins or loses. He's a Red Sox fan. I know it's his favorite team, but now he's like a Dodger fan. Now he's like putting stuff up. Turner, baby. Uh, my, right? Come on. How many favorite teams do you have in every sport? You were dead wrong. Oh <laughs> Dude, you God. couldn't be more wrong Can you right be now. a fan of two teams? Like, that? you cannot be a Yankee fan and a Mets fan. Yes, you can. No, there's no, I don't know any. Listen, there's listen, no way. listen. What do you guys how, think? How on earth can you try to judge somebody else's fandom, bro? Like, it doesn't even make sense. But I'm talking about, like, talking shit. Like, you can't be... You can yes, like, you can. No, you, you can, cannot. You cannot say, "Yeah, my Red Sox beat your Yankees," or, or "My Red, oh, the, my Yankees beat his Red Sox," and all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, but I got the Dodgers too." Like you can't have a backup insurance team. It doesn't. That's not what being a fan is all about. I'm a I'm a ride and die guy for my 76ers. They lose whatever. I'm, I don't care about the Lakers, the Celtics. I don't want anybody. I might like an athlete like LeBron. I love LeBron. Okay, so so here's the so here's the here's the thing is I think that you're dealing in an antiquated model of fandom, right? Okay. Okay. Because at the point in time where there wasn't free agency, right, and players didn't move teams very much, you you could stick with a team, you could stick with I, your I hometown it's team like and all like that. like you're rooting for laundry now. I get it. Yeah, right? and got laundry. Yeah, you? because you're you're voting you're rooting for this team, the 76ers, but all these different guys are coming in the jersey, so you're still, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So – so that's what's happening. Like players used to stay on one team for a long time. Those days are done. And but and you're so still loyal to your team. No, why? I'll give you an example. Your team isn't loyal to you. Let me give you an example. I was the biggest Charles Barkley fan in the world. Okay. Okay. So when I this is how bad I was. When I mean seventy six or two, but before satellite dish, like one out of every a hundred thousand restaurants had a satellite dish. So there was one by on Sepulveda called LGT Vegas. Let's go to Vegas. Mind you, I'm fourteen. 15 years old in high school. So after Kennedy High School, I would take my car and drive to uh, LGT Vegas and I would have the whole bar to myself. The bartender's name was Chewy and he, I would have, I'd watch the Sixer game until 6.30 and do homework in there. Every day. And then, and then the Sixers had a bad year in 90 and Charles Barkley completely gave up on the Sixers. Okay. I was heartbroken. That's why they traded him for, to Phoenix for the whole Hornacek deal. I was completely devastated. I deserted I stayed with the Sixers. My friend Tro, who was a Sixer fan, Dr. J, he went with Barkley to the Suns. Okay, so what? So, so I'm a diehard fan. I ride and die. Like, you know, let's say Bellinger. Everybody loves Bellinger. Bellinger gets traded to the uh, Red Sox tomorrow. I understand if you still like him, but you're still a Dodger fan. You can still be a Dodger fan, but, but also now in the day and age that players are so famous and you know so much about them, you can be a fan of a player above a team. So like so like there are LeBron fans, right? My son. They are LeBron fans. If LeBron comes to come play for the Lakers, guess who they're cheering for? They're cheering for the Lakers because they care about where yeah, LeBron but is. The other way too is there's a whole bunch of Laker fans that hate LeBron, and but when he comes to the Lakers, they're gonna, they're cheer gonna love him. They're, yeah, gonna, yeah. they're gonna because, love him because they love their team. And and I will tell you this: you like you're dealing with an ant antiquated model you guys were talking about fans and what is proper etiquette of being a fan especially with social media yeah it, are you allowed to like two teams in the same sport or not in the same city or whatever i say yes I say because to if no. you don't like you're you are dealing with with old times you're like the old fuddy-duddy man that the old grumpy man that lives on the corner because fans during this free agency craze that's going on players change teams they trade players all of that we never got traded what are you talking about what does, what does that have to, so but however kobe's a franchise player franchise players rarely okay get but traded. okay so when paul pierce went to brooklyn you think all these celtics fans went over and started like brooklyn now no it's not like that you like your teams like i i love the yankees if they traded um all right so Gary sanchez well i have the biggest yeah but you're not oh all right so who's your favorite baseball player of all time God, of all time. Probably like, Jeter. Mm, uh, uh, like Ricky Henderson, Reggie all Jackson. Right. Okay. Yeah, but Reggie Reggie Jackson changed teams a bunch of times. Okay, um, that's a great example. So when the Yankees didn't resign Reggie Jackson, he went to the Angels. I was a young kid then. And I kind of became an Angels fan because I loved Reggie exactly, Jackson. Exactly. I was I'm a saying. kid then. That's what I'm saying. I'm it not a kid anymore. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing for adults because... But this guy's talking shit to me. He, he's a Think about Red it. Sox fan. Think about this, right? 
you're going to have Kevin Durant at least play for two or three teams throughout his whole career, right? At least two, maybe three. You're making my point. No, no, hold on. Well, actually, no, no, no. He's already played for three. So he, three? Yeah, because he was with the Supersonics. So, oh, God. Technicality. Come on. The Oklahoma City Thunder. I mean, they are okay, two yeah. separate teams. Right. And now he's with the Golden State Warriors. City. Okay. And, and how much respect did he lose? It doesn't matter, dude. Dude, he's not. He's not. He didn't lose that much respect with actual Kevin Durant supporters. But OKC fans are like, "F you, get out!" Like you saw how they treated him when he went there. So what? But he's got, he's, is, he gained. He gained a whole new following with the Warriors. But here's my point. This dude is a. He's like, I, he, I know him. He loves the Red Sox, so he kind of likes the Dodgers. So you can't talk shit to me. Your Red Sox are out of it. My Yankees are still there. So you can't like all of a sudden like, oh, yes. how about my Dodgers? Okay. No, you can't do that. I get that. Okay, so, so I, I'll do the same thing. You know how many people I'll piss off on social media? Like, uh, uh, okay, I, I'm a, if the Yankees look like, how about my Astros, baby? Do it then. Hey, uh, dude, I I, I would am, hate myself. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Uh, I applaud people who are willing to, who do that, but then are willing to admit and say, you know, you know what? They are my backup team. I only watched them then and then, and I'm rooting for them, right? Because... If you are a real fan of the sport, right? If yeah. you're a true baseball fan and your team loses, that would actually mean that and, and you are just like I'm diehard Yankees and and you that is going to lose viewers, right? Because they're like, My team is out, I don't care. Because there there's that faction of people. Yeah. But however, people who are true fans of the sport, right? Yeah. Because I know that even when my teams go out, now I have an interest in who wins. Right. Or I have an interest in who loses, right? Like like for instance, if if the if the World Series were the Red Sox versus the Diamondbacks, right? Do you know who I would want to win? Who I would be actively rooting for? Probably the D backs. The Diamondbacks, because I hate the Red Sox. And so, so that's where fans go. They have a vested interest in who wins and who loses. But this is different. I'm talking about a guy who talks so much shit. He's a diehard. Like he loves the Patriots. So, so let's say the Patriots lose the Super Bowl, right? And all of a sudden, uh, sorry, they're losing the playoffs. And all of a sudden, uh, my Cowboys are playing the Denver Broncos. He's rooting for the Denver Broncos. No, but, you know, but the rooting is different. He's a, like a fake fan, is what I'm saying. Like, There's no such thing. You cannot. Fake, there are I, levels I, I of live and die. I don't live and die with the Yankees, and and, I, and like I give like 93 percent to the Yankees and seven percent to the uh, Cleveland Indians. Like, do I want to see the Cleveland Indians win if we lo- if we were lost to them? Of course, they haven't won in 70 years. I feel sorry for people, but. For the love of God, you cannot. You have to have one favorite team in, in each sport. You can like other athletes. I get it. Like in the NFL, I can't even think of who. who. Like when like Tony Dorsett went to the Broncos. Okay, I will. I will uh, tell you me right. Okay, I am in baseball. I am sixty percent Dodgers. Right. Like I'm. Like I'm. Like I want the Dodgers to win above and first above every team. Right. I actually no no I will say I am a hundred percent. Whoa, he went from sixty. No no, no I'm sorry. I will explain it a different different way. But it's also different. I am, you're a former. Athlete. I I am one hundred percent in with the Dodgers on baseball okay. in the National League. Oh in, no! In the American that. League. The different league. In the oh, American no. League, I am one hundred percent in with the Yankees. Oh my god! And if and, and if those teams were so to meet in the playoffs, you can't I, lose either way. I want no. I want seven games, and I want the Dodgers to win. Well, this guy would be like Dodgers, like Dodgers, and then if it was you, and then he would like throw his Dodger hat. How about my Yankees, baby? Like <laughs> fuck that. I don't. I, I cannot respect that. I cannot respect that. This guy like, and I try not to answer him on Facebook because it doesn't like to me. It doesn't count. You got to be a real. You got to be. A, you got to ride you and die. You are for your a team. real fan. Like you like, do ride and die with your team. So, but, but all right. So, one of my kids in football, right? Caden, he likes the Pittsburgh Steelers. Really? Why? Yeah, it, only the colors. Only, only guy knows. Okay. Um, Damon likes the Patriots. Cardinals. No, he likes the Patriots, but he also likes whoever's good, though. Kind of right. Yeah, he's young though. Yeah, I get it. So, and then, and then I, I, I like the Cowboys, but it's weird because like I like to see the Cowboys lose and fail. It's, it, it's like this sick kind of thing that that, that goes on. And then I wanted the Tennessee Titans to win because I love Marcus Mariota. So I'm kind of a Titans fan because I want Mariota to do well. 
But that's different. But but now that they didn't sign Kaepernick, I hope they lose every game. But Mariota plays plays well. That, that's so right. like I'm confused all over the place, bro. That I, I and that I think that I'm where most people lie. Um. Okay, so so Jason Farrell says, how about like. Uh, good. How about if you like good baseball? If the Yankees are playing the Twins, I root for the Yankees. Be a fan of the sport. I am a fan of the sport, but this is like okay. So example, let's say Houston played the Cubs. Okay, in the World Series. We're talking about fans, and can you be a fan of more than one team? And you, you guys, please uh, make sure the email is unafraidshow at gmail dot com. Send in anything. I uh, put out the mailbag, the anonymous mailbag for last week. The emails are anonymous. You can comment on anything that you want. Does not have to be sports. Um, and I we'll, we'll go over that again in a minute. But go and tell tell them how you feel, bro. So I, I'm just saying, if the I, if the Yankees, I don't expect them to beat the Astros. I told you guys that. I, I they're too they they have the exact lineup that is awful for us. They're, they're pitchers. They they have strikeout pitchers. They, they they have hitters that make contact. Our defense isn't that great. And I love Correa. He's one of my favorite players. I've always loved Jose Altuve. That's why I like baseball, because you don't have to be 6'9", a basketball player, or a 300-pounder to win the MVP. You could be a, a, mid- a midget like Altuve or Dustin Pedroia, who won it one year. So I'm okay. I get it. If the, I'm not going to be the diehard Astro fan. Like, if the Astros beat the Dodgers, because I hate the Dodgers, in the, in the World Series, I'll be happy because... I like those guys on the Astros, but I'm not going to walk around saying, how about my Astros, baby? Yeah, that's my okay, team. Okay. That ain't me. I okay. can't do it. Okay, I understand that that's not you, but that's the reality of life for so many people. Um, I feel sorry for those So, uh, you, you guys, please make sure you like the feed, swipe over, swipe over, share the feed. Um, we're going to get into the unafraid um, mailbag, the anonymous email bag, and I'm going to have – I'm going to let Joey, because I answered – these last ones, right? I'm going to let Joey answer the same questions. Ooh, so so I'm going to add I'm going to ask you the questions. Do don't don't read them off the screen, okay? Yeah, I'm ready. So, guy says or woman I'm not reading says, it. "I need advice. I told my friends I gave up on the NFL, but I'm still watching. Am I a hypocrite to myself or my friends?" You're a hypocrite to yourself. I mean, you, you gotta uh, uh, see. I'm too honest. That's the thing. Uh, my wife knows. I, I I don't like to lie. I'm honest. So if you tell your friends like I ain't watching anymore, and then like you leave the bar and you go home and you're like sitting watching the games, because I tell you, everybody watches a game for one reason, three reasons: fantasy, football pools, and gambling. That's it. I'm watching the freaking Giants Broncos game last night. I had uh, I don't even want to tell you. Anyways. Otherwise, I wouldn't care. I'm flipping back and forth with the, uh, with the, you know. No, see, see, I like to watch good football games, and I don't have anything. What are what's a good football it. game? Um, I mean, I, obviously, what's everybody a likes it because it, it's like some games feel more interesting. They feel bigger. They have that that sense what around. What was the it. game in the morning out here? Jets Patriots, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I was at, I, I wasn't even at home. For yeah, that. Jets Patriots. Like, uh, thank you, Channel Two. Yeah. Thank you. What, Raiders. <laughs> so, what about Raiders? Chargers? Like, I mean, it's not. That's big, big here in LA. Um, so, and and I said to that, I said, you're a hypocrite to your friends only. When you told your friends that you weren't going to watch the NFL, we agree. You, you knew that you were going to. No, to your friends only. No. To your not to yourself. No, yes. no, no. I, I I said because you knew that you were gonna watch the NFL, so you weren't a hypocrite to yourself because you knew that you no, were gonna hey, watch you're, it. You're hip- and, uh, but the thing it got me to thinking is is how is this dude watching the NFL? Like, is he sneaking in the bathroom? Is or yeah. or is he pretending like he's sick every weekend and laying in, in yeah. the bedroom with the, with the mute on? I said the same thing. I said I I, I, really, I I'm not watching as much as you know. First of all, we have our kids' activities on every Sunday, so I can't watch it. Yeah. But I'm just not interested in this season anymore. Okay. So I uh, okay. Next question for you: okay. Are you jumping on the idea that many have this year that LeBron has the highest chance of winning the MVP award? No, no. He's already. I, I think he's gonna be. He's gonna. He's not going to leave Cleveland on good terms. It's kind of like that. He's not going to give up like the way Charles Barkley did, and that was hard for me to watch. Like I understood, like they didn't give him any help, and Armin Gilliam came. It was, it was, but Barkley, like I watched the games, and he stopped trying. And then I was like, so let me tell you a quick story. Um, in the '88 Finals, Pistons Lakers, I was watching yeah. the game, and they went to and Charles Barkley was in the stands, and they said, "Hey, what do you think about who's going to win?" He gave his prediction. Uh, he gave his prediction. He said, I'll, "I'll give you another prediction. I won't be in Philadelphia next year." And I was like, I was, I was junior. I was like crying. I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean 
So I called. I went to, I, this is, I went to Chatsworth High School for four weeks. I remember. I, I went to a payphone. And I called the Philadelphia front office and I changed my voice and I said, Charles Barkley's made me a lot of money. If you trade him, I might come and do something stupid. True story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I, I, I tried to threaten that. I said, tell Harold Katz. That was the owner. So they didn't Dude, trade him. Do you I didn't realize sleep for how like a week. Do you realize how lucky that you were? I know. Nowadays, was, I know. Dude, they would have came I went and to a tracked payphone. down your damn school. Is that, is that, I put this on my life. I went to the, it was like lunchtime. And I went to the paper and I said, tell the owner, Harold Katz. If he trades Charles Barkley, bad things might happen. He's made me a lot of money. Click. <laughs> so I already thought the secretary was going to say, Mr. Katz, you have, uh, somebody just gave us a death threat. So I was like, even watching the news to see, I was, because I loved, I was obsessed with Charles Barkley. My whole room was Barkley. So then when he gave up on the Sixers, it was a year later, two years later. I was the first one that said, train him. I lost so much respect for him. And I get it. But he gave up on us. Like I'd watch the games, like he would like throw the ball out of bounds on purpose off his leg. He wanted out so bad, and he got traded. So, okay, next next question: the casting couches in Hollywood are in the news. Where are they? Are in the news with Harvey Weinstein. Yes. So so many women have come out to tell their stories, but now men have started to come out as well. We've heard from Terry Crews. I told a story about something that happened to me. Terry Crews. Um, uh. And I, I talked about, uh, well, the, so the question is, does sexual harassment or hazing happen in professional sports and are players free to come forward? Remember what happened with Martin and Incognito. And, and I said, I've never seen or heard of sexual harassment in the locker room, but I did have a player on my team that used to dre dress up like the Saturday Night Live character, Mango. And oh, like, I love Mango. Hey, hey, hey dude. Mango is Mango. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he would walk around the locker what room. What team was this guy? What team? Jacksonville. Oh, my he God. He would walk around with like a 12-inch dildo. And with the apple, the... Um, that's mango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah so, but but he Chris would, Kattan. but he would walk around with that. He would like put it inside of like a singlet. He would he would work out in the weight room in a singlet with this thing like on his. I mean, with this thing in his pants as well, dude. It was the most. I mean, like you would actually like they would run you out of the NFL for the stuff that, that actually went on. So, but do you think that there's any sexual harassment in the NFL locker rooms? No, not in the NFL locker rooms, but I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Okay. okay. I'm going to put my partner, George Rice, here on the spot. So, obviously, we're doing the show. We would love to get picked up. Uh, that would be ideal for us. So, let's say, George, if somebody called us, give me, what's your ideal situation? What do you want to work for? Uh, us doing our show in a studio. Well, like, who, who, what station? What, Fox? No, 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 no. I, I'd rather be in, independent on Sirius. All right, me too. Independent on Sirius. So the Sirius boss says, George, I really love what you guys are doing. You guys have a great show. Give me 15 seconds of your time. He unbuckles his, his pants. He says, I'll give you and Joey a quarter of a million dollars each to get you guys on the air. All you have to do is, what would you do? Not having it. What? You wouldn't even do it for me? Like a team. We're a team. No way, bro. Oh, my because, God. See, see, because here. Nobody, he, no, and he said nobody would know. There's no camera. Here, it, it has nothing to do with that, dude. It has to do with I am who I am. And I believe what I believe. And I'm not going to compromise that for anything. And A million and, each? No. Because, because, because here, 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 here's the thing is. Yeah. Is that another opportunity will come around that's better. And there's well, I've been saying that since 1997. And, and there's power in saying no. There's power in saying in, in saying no. So so that's why we're here, creating creating your own thing, But man. these guys, Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby, like, it's the, I think that one of the scummiest things you could do in life is, like, tell a girl you'll put her in a movie. And, and oh, like, my God. Do you? Um, I'm going to post a video on my Twitter today, right? As soon as we get off. Actually, what's well, your Twitter handle? Uh, at George Reister. W-R-I-G-H-S-T-E-R. Um, there's a video from Courtney Love. Court, Courtney oh, Love, yeah, yeah, the yeah. drunk drug addict, all of this stuff before in her life, right? I saw that, yeah. And they asked her on the red carpet, what advice would she give to young women in Hollywood? And what did she say? Stay away from Harvey Weinstein and the, uh, what hotel was that? The, the Four Seasons Hotel. Yeah. 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 So, so while, so while sometimes we discount drunk people or high people as crazy, sometimes they just tell the truth. Well, I got another story for you. And I, if I have to bring him in as a witness, if I ever get sued for this or Scientology comes after me, you know who else uses that? I just give you a hint. Somebody uses that same massage trick 
but with guys. Do you know who it is? Probably John Travolta. John Travolta. My friend was his bodyguard for years, and he told me about all these stories about John Travolta. He would like walk up to you and start rubbing you, and he's like, oh, you know what? I'm t- I love giving massages, and, and um, you know, I have a massage uh, bed at my house. Can you come? And we'll give massages to each other. And he does it with guys. And he went swimming with Hugh Jackman, and that story I'll save for another day. All right. Um, last thing up, though, is the uh, – so – I'll be back. Go ahead. We talked about this um, – I, I posted a video on my Facebook about this little kid. He's like three or four years old, and he's on top of a, a 70-kilogram – I'm sorry, 80-kilogram python, which is like 170 pounds. On top of a python, riding a python. It's the family pet. And that got me to thinking, I cannot for the life of me make sense out of or understand why these crazy people keep exotic animals as pets. Like, I I don't understand why you have big ass pythons as pets. I don't understand why you keep poisonous snakes. I got a python as a pet, baby. Woo! I couldn't wait for that one. Yeah. Poisonous spiders. They keep... A person was walking a lion here in the San Fernando Valley. A lion. Um, they keep these crocodiles. I mean, these are wild. I mean, they're not even like wild animals like dogs and cats are wild animals. Like who are domesticated. These are actual like animal. I mean, like exotic animals that can kill you and can kill people around you. And then when they get tired of them or they can't keep them, they just let them go in the wild. What kind of damn sense does this make? <laughs> okay, that's got a funny question, but we'll, we'll, we'll save it. Um, it makes no sense. I don't get it. Like, uh, do you have any? You, know, you have some dogs. Yeah, right? I got yeah. dogs, dude. Yeah. I, I, I got a little bitty dog and I got a big dog. Uh, well, a medium sized dog. But you see, like, uh, Siegfried and Roy? You know Siegfried and Roy? Yeah, right? where they kept Eventually, the, right, go on. They, they, they had the tigers. They had Tiger the white line. tigers, regular tigers. And he mauled him at, I don't know if it was at a show. I think it was at the show, right? No, 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 no. I don't think it was, was at the show. At the I think house? it was like, yeah, training. No, it was at the show. I think in front of people. People were like freaked what? out. Yeah, yeah, it was at the show. And I did see Siegfried and Roy a few times. Um, no, not in the side, like at, at, at their concert in Vegas. But uh, yeah, I remember it was. It happened during the show and people couldn't tell if it was like real or fake. And um, But that's the thing about an animal. Dog, cat, you never know when it's going to snap at you. You just never know. You can't have a lion like... You can treat it fantastic. Like, you can feed it every day. You can do it all, all, you know, you can treat him with love and respect. And then one day, boom. He's a lion. He's a, but, like, this is in his DNA. It's a tiger. It's in his DNA to do this. But don't you think, don't you see those, like, guys on uh, on Facebook that like, it's posted, like, somebody's in the jungle and, like, he hasn't seen these lions for years. And he's like, I don't know how they do They go... I'm so afraid. I do, do believe. No, go on. Like Hilda, my wife, her dream is to go on a safari. I want to go on a safari too. Dude, don't they, like the giraffe come up to you and like fucking buffalo and, and lions? Yeah, and- I've, I've actually fed a giraffe before. Yeah, but was he, what side of the cage was, was he on? No, no, no. Oh, like, hell like, no. like, where like I could touch his head, touch it. Where, okay, do you know one of the most, uh, the most, uh, how can I explain it? The worst injuries in the world are kicks by a giraffe. You know how hard those fuckers kick? Dude, you were not, you were, you were, you were, you would have punted you like 48 yards. <laughs> Where were you standing? Where were you standing? I was actually in a truck. Okay. And, and then the giraffe stick, sticks its head down. You feel Where were you? Lettuce. I was at the, uh, at the wild animal safari on like this private tour okay, but thing. Good, you, good thing you weren't standing next to the, the giraffe. I mean, those things are strong. Those, yeah. those kicks. Okay. So really quick, can we go back? Okay, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, go. On. So my Jason Farrell says, what if the executive was a Pamela Anderson in her prime? And she said, like, yep, George, well, if you weren't married, George, I'll give you and Joey a good gig on Sirius XM. You have to go down on me. Um, I, w- I wasn't like ever like a big like Barb Pamela Anderson fan. Okay, I mean, I like, mean, like the, she How was hot. Hey, How about hold Howie? on. She was a hot on Baywatch, though. I will. I don't like it. that look either. I, I'm not, I know what you're saying. I yeah. I don't, I'm not into the blonde. I, I know. But what if it was who's somebody you like? Like, I love Halle Berry. Who do you like? I like I like young Halle Berry. I, I, oh, yeah, but of but but uh but uh J Lo, even though she's almost fifty years old, has never fallen off the list. Right, she's still got to ask. So if it was J Lo, and you're not married to your beautiful wife, <laughs> yeah. And J Lo says, George, a million dollars each, you and Joey, just go down on me for ten minutes. See so what's the difference. For- for J Lo, for J Lo, when I'm not married, yeah, dude, I would have did it for free. So like, well, I would. Oh, just... so she's a female, so it's okay. But if it was a male, no, 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 you no. wouldn't do it for us. 
Correct. 100 percent. Oh my god, is that a team player? And, and wait, 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 hold up. And then me being married, I still wouldn't do it for J Lo. For for J Lo. Yeah, for a million. You just said bucks. you would. Huh? You said you would before. No, no. If I were single. Okay. Married? No, no, dude. What if, Denise, what if you told your wife? You said, Denisha, a million dollars each for me and Joey. I'll have to just ten minutes. She would tell you, you better go. She's watching. I know her. She would she's, tell you. She, my my wife is watching this right now. I Send guarantee it. you, she, I know her. She would say, Joey, you better do it. Go. I don't, don't worry about it. Just make sure it's not no longer than ten minutes. You don't think so? <laughs> Hell no, oh bro, dude. Well, Hilda wouldn't either. Hilda wouldn't. There's no. That's what I love about my wife. She. There's no price tag for Hilda. Exactly. There's no price tag for doing the right thing, dude. You will get yourself jammed up. Um, yeah. Whether it's Harvey Weinstein, any other dude. See, look. See, we're we're wife said. This. Wife said, "Hell no." Um, and at least your sing- wife watches. Hey, single though. Single though, dude. Hell yeah, man. On J Lo, dude, dude. She wouldn't. She wouldn't even have had to give us a damn show. Like, like I would have just or give me anything aside from from that 30, 45 minutes, hour, however long it is. She wouldn't have had to give me any more than that. And I did tell you on Thursday that I could have had a. I could have been a big star right now. There's a game, a TV show called The Blame Game on MTV, and I had the part. My agent said we're negotiating, and the guy wanted me like. He wanted me like, you know how he wanted me. And so my ex-girlfriend shows up to the restaurant and the guy completely changed his demeanor. And then my agent calls me in the morning and goes, what the fuck happened last night? What? I thought you guys went to like a good dinner. I go, yeah. He was trying to find out if I was gay. And then my ex-girlfriend, my girlfriend at the time, shows up because she was insecure and she didn't believe that where I was. And she shows up, his face turns like pale white. And all of a sudden he went from like hitting to me like, oh, my wife, uh, whatever. And I lost the part. I would have had it. All I had to do was maybe touch his balls or something. Like I had the part. Dude, I wouldn't have under no that. circumstances am I willing to like compromise any any of that at at all. And yes, go blue, go Dodgers, go all that. Before we sign off, are we almost done? Yeah. Okay. You want to? I know I'm putting you on the spot. We didn't, we didn't even talk about this. You know it starts tomorrow, right? The NBA season. Yes. Okay. Just give me your your. Who's gonna make the finals? <laughs> <laughs> the NBA Finals. Yes. I have my, I have mine, and I think you might be shocked, dude. If you say anything with the with the Seventy Sixers, you are going to lose all credibility. If you say Golden the 76ers. State Warriors, Seventy Sixers, the Seventy Sixers are going to win in six games. I have seen, I have, I've never been this excited. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Caveat time. If Embiid goes down, then no, I take that back. Dude. If Embiid goes down, no, no. Embiid has to stay. If he dude, gets hurt, do you think they're going to the NBA Finals with two rookies as two of their best players? Yep. Two did you, rookies. Did you see what happened with Embiid and Hassan Whiteside? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah how yeah, great yeah, was so that? Yeah. I love you, Twitter. Yeah. Oh my God, was that the greatest? Oh yeah. my God, I love that. How can you not love? Do you like Embiid? He's you gotta cool. love him, dude. He's cool. You gotta love him, dude. Dude, you dude, see what you, Andre Iguodala tweeted out? You have man crush, dude. No, dude, no, 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 no. And be, no, man crush is Korea. I mean, huh? my man crushes are only for baseball. That's it. He, he's didn't I tell you that day? He killed us yeah. two games in a row. Yeah, dude. I, I, I don't, I don't the understand. The Sixers. I don't understand team? the man crush. I don't understand the man crush. Lakers, Lakers. Oh, here, here we Lakers go. Lakers in the championship? No, no, no. no. You oh, said Lakers. Oh, no, no. I thought you said who's no, no, who's my, your team my, to, to win? My team is the the uh, Lakers. Yeah. However, however, love the Warriors. Did you love the Warriors seven years ago? No. Okay, see, now, now we know why his stance against the fan thing. No, dude, because I love do, – do you know what made me start loving the Warriors? Yeah. I love everything Steph Curry stands for. Love everything oh, he believes no. in. Oh, no, Steph Curry. No, no, no. I, first of all, have you seen him? Man, he hit the weights hard. Yeah. Dude, he hit – and you know what I couldn't believe, too, is uh, – what's his name? Uh, Yasiel Puig is jacked. Yeah. I saw him after the Players game. Players are starting to, he's taking, he's become a professional and actually like work out. Yes. I mean, Yasiel Puig, if, if he took it seriously, he's top five, top 10. Yeah. If he took it seriously. The arm, the hitting. He is now though. Yeah. He got hurt though, sliding in a, a second at the end of the game. But the 76ers, if Embiid stays healthy, they will be in the championship. You are drunk, dude. I'm they, telling you. I, Hilda, I, Hilda, Hilda, Hilda. I will they send beat the, a, They beat uh, the Nets home. by 30. They beat the Miami Heat by 20-something. With it's Embiedin. preseason. But, dude, the other, but their starters are playing. You'll see. We have come a tough on. game. We're on TV against the Washington Wiz on Wednesday. Oh, oh my ESPN. God. We'll beat them. Oh my. So? We'll beat them. So At Washington? What? So what? Dude, Washington had the longest winning streak Guess at home. what? It, who 
cares where was Washington Wizards when it mattered the most in the Eastern Conference Finals? Nowhere. They were they were at home watching the Cavaliers play the ball. They're going to be watching the Sixers play the Celtics this year. Your Cleveland is not going to get there this year. Sixers Celtics. And it's going to be Boston. Final. It's going to be gonna Boston. play Golden State in the conference championship. Oh, OKC probably right. Oh, that'll be awesome. Or the, or the Spurs. You, you hold on. Oh, you just said you like no the Spurs are done. You just said that. Golden State's your second team. Mm-hmm. How much would America be rooting for OKC to beat Golden State in the Western Conference Final if it came down to that? Um, People love Russell Westbrook. It's not even a question in my mind. They respect Durant's game, but Russell Westbrook, they love. They pick Russell over Kevin Durant. Even Michael Jordan. No way. He's very... Uh, uh, no way. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, unafraid Reister or well, I'm Reister or wrong. This Joey, Look out for the Joey pythons Hines. out there, um, walking pythons. Like the feed, share the feed, and uh, hit us up on email unafraidshow at gmail Let me give my Twitter handle by the way. It's at Joey Hine, J O E Y H A I M. You got eighty thousand right followers. Yeah. I'm almost at 500, baby. Woo. I started late. <laughs> Boom, peace out. Yankees tonight. Yankees. I'm telling you right now, the Yankees are gonna win. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Uh, we were.